Okay, folks, we're back inside the chicken house again today. What we're going to do today is talk a little bit about some of the tools that we use inside the chicken house that help us better manage, you know, what's going on. Chickens, raising chickens to some degree is a bit of a feel. You kind of have to figure out what works, what doesn't work. You know, you learn once you've grown chickens long enough, you can walk inside that house and tell whether something's wrong. Is the temperature right? Is the humidity level where you want it? You can listen to the chickens. They'll tell you if something's wrong by just listening to their sound level, looking at where they're positioned inside the house. But there are tools that we use, especially when the chickens are babies. We're trying to make sure we've got the temperature right. We're trying to make sure we've got the ammonia level right when them little baby chickens show up. There are some tools that we can use. So a little bit of what we're gonna talk about today is the tools that we use. Jonathan's here with me again today. I'm gonna to let him talk first about the infrared thermometer that helps us measure what's going on. And I'll talk a little bit about measuring the ammonia level. All right, we've got an infrared temp gun here and you'll use this more at the beginning of the flock. Uh, what I like to use it for is check my litter temps, as we talked about in a previous video. You want to make sure you have a good preheat on your house, good litter temps. And what you can do is you'll basically check that litter temp down through the house. You'll just kind of see what, what you're running. Right now we're 83, 84 degrees. Our birds are about two weeks old, which that's about typically what you would see. With, uh, with a, a baby bird preheating, brooding temps, you want to see you know, at least 88 to 90 degree litter temps. Now underneath the brooder, you might have 120, 130 degrees. That's too warm, but that chicken will find its comfort zone. So you wanna kinda run down the house, measure that temp, you know, 88, 90 degrees, and be able to drag a little litter back and check a couple inches down in the litter. They're real easy to use. I think you can probably pick them up for about 75 for, or $100 and check your temps. Now later on in the flock, you can also use them to check breaker temps. If you've got a, a one breaker in particular or a main breaker that's running really, really hot, that could indicate that you have a, a problem like a loose lug. You might want to contact an electrician to maybe check your panel out, make sure you don't have any issues, keep uh, kind of prevent from losing a house of chickens. So in addition to that temp gun, another thing we like to use a lot of the time it's what called ammonia meter. These little guys are a lot pricier than what Jonathan's infrared thermometer is. Like he says, you can pick up a, a temp gun for maybe $75, $80. These are a good bit more expensive. They're between four or $500. But if you're trying to figure out just exactly how much ammonia you've got in that house and make sure that you've got the proper environment for that chicken, they're pretty handy to have. And basically what you do, you turn them on they run through their little calibration warm-up sequence, and then they will monitor and measure how much ammonia is in the air based on where you're holding that thing. Now, again, keep in mind, if you're walking along, you're getting one ammonia reading here, but there's gonna be a different ammonia reading down here on the floor because the chickens are on the floor and the ammonia is generating out of this litter. So be aware that if you're walking through your house trying to get a reading on this, the reading you get at four or five feet high may be completely different than something you're getting at floor level where the baby chickens are. But basically what I do, I turn this thing on, I look at it and it will tell me just exactly what the reading is. Right now there's zero on this meter, so it's telling us we don't have any ammonia in this house. So again, it's hot weather. These guys are two weeks old. We've got a lot of airflow going through here right now. It's keeping what ammonia is being generated pulled out. This litter is still generating ammonia. There's ammonia coming off of it, but we've got enough airflow through this house that it's not building up inside the house. But again, whenever you've got baby chickens, you've got very low levels of ventilation. You wanna make sure you don't have too much ammonia on those little guys because it's very easy to damage the eyes. It's very easy to damage the respiratory system. And if you know what you've got, it will tell you whether you need to increase the ventilation, whether you're about where you need to be. So these are pretty handy, even though they're a little bit pricey, they're pretty handy to have, especially if you're, if you're new and, and don't really know how to get a feel for ammonia yet, or if you've kind of become desensitized to it. If you've grown chickens for a long, long time, you kind of get used to it. 
and it's hard to tell whether you've got 20 parts or 30 parts. But this little guy does a pretty good job of helping you figure out just exactly how much ammonia you've got in the house. One more tool that we use that helps us kind of figure stuff out is called a magnahelic device. Now a magnahelic device basically helps us measure how much static pressure we've got inside the chicken house. One tube goes on the inside. There's two ports on this little guy. One goes on the inside of the house. One's on the outside of the house. And the chicken house is a negative pressure system, folks. The fans that are at the end of the chicken house, they pull air out. They don't push air in. So a chicken house is a negative pressure system. The system is always trying to fill in that vacuum. So whenever you're in tunnel and your cool cell doors are opened or your tunnel curtain is down, air is coming through that cool cell pad rushing into that house because fans at the other end are pulling air out. Same way when they're little chickens, like the ones we've got in this house. They're on minimum ventilation a lot of the time, but still, when those fans are running, fresh air is being pulled in through your side vents and air is being exhausted at the far end from your fans. So air is being pulled away. And nature does not like a vacuum. It's gonna to try to fill in that air. So this guy tells us how much static pressure we want. We need a certain amount based on how old these chickens are, but we don't need too much. If you get too much static pressure, your fans are working too hard. They're not as efficient. Again, a lot of new controllers these days have a static pressure device built into them. So that kind of helps give you a feel. But a lot of times when I travel, if someone does not understand static pressure very well, and I try to explain just exactly what's happening and, and why static pressure is important. This is another pretty good tool to have just to help me get my point across. So again, there's lots of tools that we can use that help us do a better job at growing chickens. And again, the better job you do growing chickens, the better those chickens are gonna perform. With that, we'll sign off again and we'll talk to you again next time. Thanks for tuning in.